Hi, I'm Vignesh Shivakumar from Phoenix Financial Training, here to share a few final words of advice and tips for your advanced financial management exams, which you'll be walking into in a few days. The structure of the exam is such that you have two, three questions, one question of 50 marks and two questions of 25 marks each. Nearly half the exam is discursive with the other half being computational elements that you would typically perform in a spreadsheet as your exam is computer based. Some of the commonly examined areas that you have in AFM which tend to come up almost always in the exam include investment appraisal which may come in the form of a question requiring you to perform the appraisal of a project in a foreign country or alternatively assess a project using an alternative mechanism of assessment called adjusted present value. You should also be aware of how you compute whether a project is viable and be able to evaluate the viability of a project using a range of other measures like duration, IRR, MIRR, payback and so on. You may be asked to discuss some of these results as well as talk about assumptions related to computations you have performed. Another area that often gets tagged along with investment appraisal is real option valuation which is performed using the Black-Scholes option pricing model. So you have a project and you have an option to expand or an option to sell off the project midway that adds to the flexibility of your existing project and we need to be able to value this flexibility using Black-Scholes option pricing model in order to get a fair value of the project we are evaluating. The second area that merits equal importance is mergers and acquisitions. So you could be asked a range of questions here which may involve you computing the value of an existing company or a company that is being formed after a merger or a demerger using a range of methods mainly the present value of free cash flows method which may involve you estimating the value of equity using the FCF to entity or the FCF to equity method. The other important equity valuation methods include the PE ratio method, the multiples approach and the dividend valuation model. Now besides being asked to do a computation of the value of a company, you are often asked some add-on questions such as what would the gain to the target company shareholders be? What would the gain to the acquiring company shareholders be? What's the value added due to a merger or an acquisition? And you need to be able to perform the basic valuation and then put it together to answer these questions. There are plenty of past exam questions with exactly the same template and attempting the recent few years questions in this area is probably the best way to prepare yourself for these eventualities. It is also important to ensure you cover up the worldy bits within mergers and acquisitions which is frequently tested which may involve you being asked to justify whether an acquisition makes sense or whether the synergies that are expected are realistic. You may also be asked to advise on the legal regulatory aspects which may affect a merger or an acquisition with reference to global regulatory framework for mergers and acquisitions and also be asked to talk about defenses against takeovers in the context of a hostile takeover. On the back of investment appraisal and mergers and acquisitions, valuation relating to mergers and acquisitions, I cannot but uh, stop myself from talking about cost of capital which is embedded into both these areas. Whenever you need to perform a free cash flow valuation or an NPV, you need the appropriate discount rate which reflects the risk of the company you are trying to calculate the value for or the project you are trying to evaluate. And therefore, you need to be well prepared in working with beaters, adjusting for business risk whenever there's a merger or a demerger, or sometimes using proxy companies when we are entering a new sector to identify the appropriate beta and then use that in estimating the cost of equity and the VAC. 
you will also need to be equipped with the skills to perform the calculation of the cost of debt of a company using methods like IRR or credit spreads. Further, you will also be asked questions, primarily discursive ones, where you will need to talk about the different financing methods that a company can consider, what are the factors that will affect the mode of financing a company uses. You may need to reflect on the advantages and disadvantages, do a relative assessment of whether one financing method is better than the other. And this is largely an area where you tend to get very commercial questions. So you have to apply a little bit of your knowledge, a lot of the scenario info and plenty of common sense and produce commercially sensible answers. Next, you have risk management, which is a guaranteed question in the exam. You're bound to have a question primarily focusing on either interest rate risk or foreign exchange risk, along with related discussion elements. So this may take the form of you being asked to hedge using FRAs or futures or options or collars or swaps in interest rate risk or forwards, futures, options, both OTC and market traded, as well as money market hedges in foreign exchange risk. Many a time, you're not asked to hedge using all the methods. You're selectively told to hedge using a few methods, and then you may be asked to discuss the calculations you perform alongside other hedges already completed by the examiner. Moving further into the other areas. So what are the other areas that you could get tested on? There are always going to be bits and pieces around these five core areas that we have already spoken about, such as bits on treasury, on behavioral finance. You could be asked some questions on Islamic finance. So there are a range of other areas from which you could have small tiny bits that you are tested on. It's important you make sure that you quickly brush up these bits. Again, don't spend a huge amount of time on this. The key is to just again focus on the recent past exam questions and that will hopefully cover up most of these areas. In addition to that, you might just want to do a very quick brush up. Just be careful you don't spend too much time just reading the general theory. What you want to do is just familiarize yourself with the broad idea so in case you have a few easy marks in these other topics, you're able to gain them as well. Key to success in the exam is largely driven by meticulous time management. AFM is an extremely time pressured exam. Ask anybody who's done the exam, that's probably the biggest challenge. It's near impossible to try and do the exam in 3 hours and 15 minutes, which is the time you have. And therefore, it's very important you stick rigorously to the time per question. So on the 50 mark question, you spend no more than 95 to 100 minutes, including reading. And on the section B questions, you don't spend anything more than 45 to 50 minutes. And you've got to stick to that no matter what and move on to the next question. So make sure you're leaving yourself enough time to do each part of the question. Once you feel you're overspending time on one part, you've got to move on to the next and grab the easy marks, which gets me to the second point. There are always easy marks in most of the question parts. About 80% of the exam is going to be similar to the past exam pattern. You'll probably have 20% that's a bit awkward, that's a bit new, that is probably off the beaten track. And all you've got to do in the 20% is to survive, is to get a few marks. With the remaining 80% of the marks, you can definitely do enough to get what you need to pass the examination. So it's all about looking for those easy marks and spreading your attention across question parts. You don't want to get stuck up into one part and then realize you've missed 10 marks at the end, which would probably have been easy pickings. Further, given that the exam is in a computer-based environment, it's important you simulate the real exam environment, get used to reading questions on screen, practice how you're going to lay out your response option or your response screen, whether it be a spreadsheet 
or whether it be a word processor and how are you going to view the information given the nature of AFM you often have to pick information from your exhibits and use that so how are you going to efficiently lay out your screen what what is your modus operandi inside the exam hall now you don't want to be practicing that on the day of the exam we you better do that before the exam a few mock exams at least two mock exams that you do under timed conditions in a cb environment will be helpful there is often a tendency to believe that studying is more important i've got to keep studying until i finish all the areas however the mock probably is the most important thing that you need to do in the last week before the exam at least two marks yes the studying is important but the mock exam is definitely more important because otherwise there's a tendency will stress out we would uh, miss out on the exam technique would miss out on the time management and that finally takes me to the last point the nature of afm is very intimidating there's lots of info in the exam and it's quite possible that we may tend to sometimes succumb under pressure and we don't want that what's important is you keep your calm you've done your best going into the exam and it's important that you keep your calm and keep working through the small bits remember 20% of the exam is definitely hard for everybody and if you are reasonably well prepared and have done a bit of question practice a few marks you're probably much better off than your peers going into the exam globally and therefore you stand a very good chance to pass the exam and therefore it's important you believe in yourself and keep going if you get stuck somewhere assume a number or go on to the next step and keep scoring easy marks So on behalf of Phoenix Financial Training I'd like to extend all our best wishes and I hope your exam goes really really well